Last time we started to develop a finite element model in order to solve for a z polarized wave propagating along the x-axis towards a perfect electric conductor. Here is the equation for this problem that we want to solve using the finite element method. It's a wave equation for the ez component of the propagating plane wave. So ez here is our unknown. So far we divided up the one-dimensional spatial region of interest into one-dimensional node-based elements, which you can see here. Ultimately, using the finite element method, we want to develop and solve a matrix equation of the form k, which is a coefficient matrix, times ez, where ez is, is an array that holds the values of the unknown at each node in the grid from node 1 to node nn, where nn here is the number of nodes in the grid. And then this is equal to b, the right-hand side array. That is, if we expand this matrix equation, we will have a system of equations that looks like this. So we have k11, the first coefficient, or the first term in the coefficient matrix, k12, and so forth over to k1 and n. And this goes k21 down to k n n 1. And along the other diagonal here we'll have k n n n n. And all these coefficients will be multiplied by the easy array, which is easy 1, easy 2, so forth down to easy n n and that is equal to b1, b2, and so forth, down to b, n, n. So along this one-dimensional grid, we can label the unknowns that we're solving for in this system of, of equations. So here we would solve for e, z, 1, so the subscript gives a node number. Here we would solve for the value e, z, 2, and so forth to e, z, n, n here on the right side. Once we figure out what to set this coefficient matrix here equal to, and the right-hand side b, what we should set that equal to, then the simplest way to solve for the ez values will be to take the inverse of matrix k, which I will have to write up here. So ez ultimately will be equal to the inverse of matrix k times B, the right-hand side array, which in MATLAB we can write more succinctly as EZ is equal to K with a backward slash B. As a side note, there are better ways to solve for EZ than just taking the inverse of matrix K, but this is the easiest method that we can start with. We will go into all of this in more detail, I just want to give you an idea right now of where we're heading. Before we go on, let's start developing the code that we will use to solve for the EZ fields at the nodes and across the simulation domain. So let's start our FEM, our finite element code, by writing something like clear all, so we don't use any old variables. And then we need to define some basic parameters. So we're going to define C, which is the speed of light, and then we're going to define the source frequency. Let's that equal, set that equal to 150 hertz, since that is the mean frequency for the EMG signals. We should also introduce lambda, the wavelength, which is C over F. And we need to define epsilon naught and mu naught. And then let's choose the same grid resolution as what we had for FDTD, which is fairly common for FEM as well. So LE, we can call that the length of each element, is lambda over 20. And let's maybe model at first 30 elements. That would be equivalent to a region of space that covers a distance of 1.5 wavelengths from the PEC wall. So NE, the number of elements, will be 30 to start with. That means the number of nodes will be, we'll just say NE plus 1. That way if we ever change NE, NN will automatically change. 
Here is everything written out more clearly from the previous slide. Go ahead and create a new file and get your FEM code started with this information in it.